Are they jorts? Everybody's Dude. copying. Or are they shants? They're not shants. They're jorts. They're jorts. I think they're shants. You like that? Are those Calvin's shoes? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be giving you guys the video that you want every single day. The comment sections are just like, please work on the RX-7, work on the RX-7. Well, we've got that 350 packed away, so today we're just gonna be focusing just on the FD, and I'm gonna give you guys an update on where the car is. Every time I'm filming, Dustin walks up behind me and does something inappropriate. You're gross, dude. I don't do that, I'm mature. As much as I want to put the motor in right now and like give you what you want, because trust me, I'm trying to do that. That's no, not yo, yo, the motor ain't going in yet. The motor will go in when the motor's ready. What does that even mean? The motor Listen, could go bro, in at the hey, moment. How about we just show them something while we're under the car real quick? See this? These here are fuel lines. These things, these three things, this is what delivers the fuel to your engine. Yeah. And to the fuel tank. Yep. Mm -hmm. We need to remove these rubber lines. We need to flare these ends and put and fittings on the end of them before we can put the engine in. Can you imagine trying to work on these while the engine's in the car? You can't do it. Once these are done, the engine goes in. Trust me, I'm pushing just to say screw it and put the motor in. Yeah, Trust me. You your own fuel lines then. But. They'll be done wrong. To do it properly and waiting for all the parts and waiting to do everything correctly. It's not going in at the moment, but I'm gonna just spend the day here with Mickey putting in some hours on this car because it's definitely still needs it. So what we're doing today is actually finishing up what we started at the E-level, uh, accurate E-level system. We have to route all the airlines, which we're gonna run next to our fuel lines that get covered up with these plastic uh, fuel line covers. And we're also gonna run the E-level sensor wiring so that that part of the system, air system is done, then all we have to do is mount the tank and uh, power everything, so. But you can't power it you without a motor. can't power it because that leads us to our next project, which is actually re relocating the battery, which is gonna go into the rear tray behind the passenger seat. No, I think you mean the motor. The motor's the power. What's the sense of putting the motor in if we can't start it? Because it looks cool, Mickey. <laughs> and it would be a great thumbnail. Oh. Touché. So Mickey just ran the front right airline from the front to the back of the car. And what's pretty neat, which Mickey, I commend you for, he's running this airline actually through the subframe of the car and he just smoked a couple holes on both sides and is running this underneath it. One of the main reasons is why we're talking right here is because the down pipe's gonna come through right here and it's gonna get super, super hot and we wanna make sure that this line doesn't get too hot or burst or anything. So it's running through, it goes to the other side of the subframe and then as we're shooting it back with these fuel lines, which is gonna be cool because we're gonna cover the fuel lines with this cover. It's actually because of the dump tube off the wastegate. Literally, this is the engine. Well, the down pipe's gonna be coming through right here down too. Down pipe is also coming down over the top. But we have but two this is very hot pipes right next to yeah, each other. Yeah, exactly. So running it through the subframe will shield it for one with some very thick steel. And also there's holes in that subframe, so air actually moves through it as you're driving. So it should keep it cool enough. We shouldn't have to worry about any ruptured lines. So while Mickey is finishing up the rear end of that, I'm gonna get this hose line and start the passenger side, which is super simple. As you can see here, we have the hose mounted on the bottom of the frame rail, which is super nice. I've never gone to that detail with any other car. So it's pretty cool with this universal air kit. They have little like mounting brackets and a couple extra features that I haven't seen in the past. So it's pretty simple. I'm gonna cut the line, insert it right here, and then just start mounting it with this other line going down with all the fuel lines and just run it to the back end of the car and then they get covered up with this this um, plastic fuel shielding which is pretty cool so you really want the cars in the air and those are back on you wonder if you even notice that we've got that we're also going to run the e-level height sensor uh, wiring along with this as well so. So as I've said a million times, we've been waiting on a lot of parts for this, which is kind of why this is taking so long. We're taking like two steps forward, one step back, because we're getting to a certain point and then realize we're missing certain things. One of those things that we had to wait on for quite a while from Mazda was a new pulley. This is a brand new one from Mazda, and here is our old one. The reason why we are replacing this one, is you probably can't pick it up. Oh, you actually could hear it. It's just kind of, as Mickey likes to say, it's clapped and needs to get changed out. A lot of the parts going back on this car are brand new, which is a pretty cool feeling. While Mickey finishes up doing the rear end of the car, because we finish up doing all the hoses from the airbags, all that goes from underneath the car. And right now it's currently just piled underneath, right about here, because our management is gonna be sitting right here. Because we're taking a lot of like the original tools out of the car and not running like the spare tire and stuff, it gives us some room to play with where we can tuck and hide wires. So this is a cool little neat spot. We're gonna have the plastic cover on here when we're all said and done, but you were supposed to like, you're supposed 
supposed to screw these in or drill these in somewhere and hang it somewhere in the car, but Mickey has got their better idea to just do some 3 end tape and kind of stick it to this like under to the wheel well of the car. And all of the wires and management for all the stuff will just hang right here and stay hidden. So Mickey is now going to start wiring all of this stuff, which is kind of like a specialty of his. No, no, no. It is, and while he's doing that, I'm gonna do the fun but very, very boring job of putting back all the trim and moldings for the car. That is something that we have been waiting on for a while, and we have a stashed pile of OEM RX-7 stuff from Mazda, and it's gonna take quite a while to figure out where all this stuff goes. So I'm gonna start laying that out, take this old panel off, because we even replaced like the original retainer clips that come with the car. To give an example of how detailed this is, and I, just, I keep saying that about this build, all new moldings and even to little itty bitty clips. It's so small it can't even focus on it. This took a lot of time for all of this stuff to come in. So like the little trick on this stuff is... Yeah, I was going to say, how am I going to find... How right. do I know where everything goes? So that's the same thing I ran into when I did my Honda. So each one of these part numbers, you don't want to separate the part from this part number. So if you're going to remove this from here, you want to grab your laptop and just punch in this number in your laptop and Google will find this exact part in a database, like in a Mazda database, and it will tell you, they're pretty good about it, so this is called protect. So I already know what this is, this actually goes in the end of that, this molding here. This is the, the molding that goes underneath your, um, your driver's side door window. So Wait, the, what? The door handles here. Oh my God, I forgot here. we even ordered that. Yeah, so this protect piece is actually the finisher for this. It actually, see how this is all bent up already? Yeah. This actually slides into here when you install it and finishes the panel. So what's nice is you have all brand new clips. I grabbed the old one off the door already. And this is put back on at the paint shop. Look at the condition of the clips. That one's still good, but this yeah. one's missing all together. This one's missing half the clip. This one's missing three quarters of the clip. This one's there and this one's broken. Most people would just throw this back on their car and send it. Not us, brand new shit. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is put back this trim molding first. This is what will be in between the actual plastic door panel and the door itself. And for these, I'm using all brand new clips. These things are like gold and these don't typically come with like fastener and clip kits that you can buy it like online on Amazon. Like this, I bought this for all the other door pieces and all the other panels and stuff, but this does not come with those like T fasteners, which was a lesson I had to learn the hard way. So with now with this, I'm gonna insert probably like 15 of them in this strip and reinstall it. And I know it doesn't look like much, but it's a small details that are going to make this build go far. This is so satisfying. Brand new clips. Ooh. 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 Next, we got this brand new molding from Mazda that's going to run on the inner outside of the door if that makes sense. And thankfully this one comes with brand new clips so we don't need to waste any of ours on this. We have a special delivery and something I've been waiting to show you for quite a long time and you are now about to get a sneak peek of it. If I see any comments about my birdie legs, I swear to God I'm gonna ban you. Also, huge shout out to Calvin. He's putting in some hours finishing up the last couple bit of orders. I'm sorry it's taking a little bit longer than normal, but we're doing our best. So here we have the first prototype shift knobs. These are very, very long overdue. I'm not going to tell you too much about this quite yet because this is a prototype, but this probably in my hands weighs almost, I would say like three pounds, but that may be overdoing it. It's very heavy. Like, like you can listen to it. Listen to that meat slap. So it's a very, very heavy shift knob and I like circles because you can grab it. You can grab it at like any position. I'm thinking about making this in like Nissan, Honda, and Toyota, and Subaru. I think Toyota and Subaru are like pretty much the same thing, but uh, they're gonna be pretty limited. I'm not just set on the colors yet, so I'm gonna include a poll right now at the top corner of the screen so you guys can choose what color you want to see. I just removed our nice mirrors to take out this molding because we were placing that too, boys. Ooh, look at that. Oops. That kind of scared me. That is crusty and scent flakes everywhere. Kind of like your butthole. Not like my butthole, Mick. Now we got a fresh new one. Ooh. 
We're literally like rebuilding this door to be brand new. So now we have another trim. This is the trim that sits on the top of the door right here. This is called a belt molding. A belt molding? Belt molding. Oh, yeah, yeah. Belt. Are you guys really looking for the butthole gummy worm gift? Oh, here it is, here it is. Oh, nice. Here it is. my God. So the only thing reused off of this door is this locking mechanism right here. And remember guys, this is the door that we ordered from Japan. This was a JDM spec RX-7. So this was the passenger side door. I have a cough. <laughs> look, look how many gummy worms that is. <laughs> this was a Japanese door. And then we retrofitted it with our US spec yeah, it's a lot driver's of side door and rebuilt it with all the right clips and rewired it so these panels would work. So it's pretty neat. The door and this door handle are from Japan and everything else is US spec. It's pretty cool. So before I went ahead and put this door panel back in, I wanted to just kind of clean it up a little bit more. And then I saw that I didn't really do a good job of cleaning the vent that was on the inside of this door. So I flipped it over and found that there's actually only a couple of screws holding this whole contraption together. And I was able to get this AC vent out. You guys are gonna freak out how disgusting this is. So you guys have known that like, I've been deep cleaning all of the interior pieces on this car because they were disgusting. So about right here, it looks like pretty clean, like not too bad. And then look at the inside, look at all that black fuzz. Now, I tried cleaning all that and it, it was like really difficult to get a, like a screwdriver in there and you flip it around oh, oh my god that is so Disgusting i'm gonna try to hose this off or my, I might be able to go to the sink and try and rinse all this shit out I'm so glad I took this off to clean it one deep cleaning and rinse later. This piece literally looks Brand new came out really good I'll probably do this with all the vents because that made literally a night and day difference and now it doesn't look all crusty. It actually moves and swivels a lot better now. Dope. Door panel is officially back on. Even found the little clip to protect the inside of the door handle. At the moment, I can't find where I put my inner piece triangle for the inside mirror. So I still have to find that, but I'm hoping that this clips on and I don't have to retake this whole panel off and get it underneath. I'm currently in search of a door handle bucket right here and a lever because both of them are kind of screwed up from the American spec version that I have. So I'm searching for these two. And then the last piece I technically need is that air vent in the middle. And then I'm gonna be putting a custom um, interface right here, so I'm not worried about that. And other than that, we have all the interior pieces of the car. My three pedals got shipped today from Tommy F. Yes, we should have that soon. Ooh, look how clean that is. And I wanna go ahead and finish the door trim that goes on the inside of here so I can close this door and hear that factory thud. But uh, I'll probably will start that and finish that up tomorrow. And I've got factory window moldings and window trims. Literally everything looks so good. It literally looks like this car came off the showroom floor. So I'm really, really amped on how all of this is turning out. That's how proposals really work, okay? A woman has to incept the idea into the man's head. To leave without ever actually leaving because you know him until he becomes weak and caves in and gets fed up and is like, shut the f 